Okay, um, you know, so I say people uh, leave the premises um, somewhat inebriated. But this is not the purpose of visiting the beer festival for most people. This is um, an occupational hazard <laughs> with visiting a beer festival. And the purpose is to actually go round and sample the beers and you know, renew acquaintance with old friends and try new beers. And it's, um, it's not a piss-up, it's a voyage of discovery. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah, I, it's, um, it's a religion with a lot of people in many respects. My role is the organiser. But actually, the, as an organiser, there is very, very little to do for me. Except at the end of the day, sign bits of paper and take responsibility and make, if there's a decision that has to be made, then I have to make it. It seems to be an absolute chaos to start with. Ah! But all of a sudden it all flows together. Why? Because they know what they're doing and the game is team. And I will satisfy your soul But I just keep on drinking Yes, I keep on drinking Yeah, I just keep on drinking Till good liquor carry me down Now my woman told me About 15 years ago Bill, you gonna drink one of these mornings And you'll never drink no more But I will just keep on drinking Yes, I keep on drinking. Yeah, I just keep on a drinking. Till good liquor carry me down. Now I wake up in the morning, holding a bottle tight. When I lay down at night, mama, it's a gallon out of sight because I just keep on a drinking. Yes, I keep on drinking. Why do people volunteer? Why are people who work behind the bar? Um, the treasurer, um, people who uh, basically all behind the scene. It's because they thoroughly enjoy doing it. We've been doing festivals for about the last five years and it started off coming along as a punter, having a few beers, used to bring a bit of bread and cheese along, try it out. And then somebody said, well, you know, why don't you come along and have a work? You get a chance to taste the beers for nothing. Um, great bunch of guys that work here. Real cross-section of people as well. And it's, it, you know, you never know who you're going to bump into. A lot of retired guys who do it, they go around the country helping out at beer festivals. I was, I was down here last year, the other side of the bar, and had a thoroughly enjoyable time and decided I might as well do some work and get the beer for free rather than have to pay for it this time round. I, I like, uh, I mean, one harmless little bottle here is just 11% and it's a, a nice bedtime drink. This one has got a, a wire top you've got to take off carefully. Then there's a, a, a cork underneath you've got to take off carefully. So the bottom the bottom was a dimple which gives you the clue that it's, it's got bottle condition. It's got a lot of yeast. So, Someone gives you their half pint glass, I start pouring. Hang on, there's more beer in here than what there is in, 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 the, in the glass. And it's bubbling away merrily, what do I do? Oh well, best of luck next time. Uh, Roy Barber, uh, since, since the first one. So you've been here 17 years? Yes. It's got better and better and better. Thank you. The first year was horrendous. We were totally understaffed. Couldn't even, have, couldn't even get a loo break. Um, there's 140 people volunteering over the course of three days. We're laying on food, t-shirts and transport. Some people take it a bit too seriously. Um, I've had phone calls at odd hours of the night, including one at half seven this morning. People putting the staffing forms through my door at 
about half past twelve, and then we're obviously coming home from the pub. We're getting a lot more of the opposite sex, i.e. the females here, than we used to. And I think that's possibly because now we're doing uh, a wine bar and the, uh, the bottles, foreign bottles. And of course, nowadays, uh, the ladies are uh, equal to the men when it comes to going out and having a few bevies. It's a mixture of people right across the board, um, from a high court judge down to just an ordinary, ordinary person. You know, there, there is no class in it at all. Everybody's even. Everybody's got their own opinion of what uh, is uh, the best real ale, and that often, um, you know, it's not heated discussion, but good, strong discussion, you know? and it just carries on like that. Uh, I'm from Germany, and. Uh... I don't know. I, I came here three years ago to, to work in, in England and I found out about this beer festival and I, I, I really loved it. I am the mayor of the city of Brighton and Hove and, you're, and today I'm come to you as an honorary guest. Yesterday my visitors was the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. I'm May, I'm Jones and we're sisters. sisters. This is my first time at this beer festival. This is my first time. My name's Dan. Um, I've never been here before. Um, I came here because Ruth suggested it. We've tasted about 25 different beers already, I think. Um, and the fact that I can still speak is, is quite amazing. But um, no, it's been some, some, really, some really interesting beers. Yeah. Oh yes, we come here every year. Usually on a All Thursday, so, because it used to be there used to be fewer people on Thursday, but not this year. It's actually uh, OTT. I, I usually come to a festival and see lots of beers and then head straight for one which I know. Because That's because not the point! I know it's not the point, but because there's so many, it's kind of confusing as to what to go for, so it's easier just to go for one you know. No. But it's for the men. <laughs> oh, there's It hasn't changed. Oh. There's more beer here, I think, and more people. It's and, more like, and, and that is, it's more cosmopolitan. I was very surprised, as I said earlier, with the amount of people here. And what's the time? One o'clock, and all these people here enjoying their drinks and enjoying their hours. But as it's as it's all in the camera, I say I'll have a real hour tonight. I think. It's for me, it, it, strength isn't the important factor. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, I mustn't drink anything under 6.2. It's the subtleness of it, the subtleness of the flavour, um, how it goes down, how it sits, how it feels, how it feels in the mouth. There's so many... You, you can't really break it down to any one specific thing. Um, what I'm drinking is Sussex Mild. Very tasty pint actually. It's very licorice very um, woody sort of taste. I'm not normally an ale drinker, but I can certainly drink this. Mm. Very fruity, sort of hoppy flavour. Nice. There is such a range of beers and different styles that even if somebody thinks, oh, I don't like beer, there is probably something somewhere that will actually suit their palate. And it's being able to share that um, enjoyment with other people. And I, th I, th yeah. I think that's really why we all get involved with it. Yeah. Yeah. This is my husband. Hello. Am I supposed to say, is this for the, who's this for? I, I am Gordon. Uh, this is my second time at the festival. I am currently drinking Philo's Cardinal. And it has a, it's a, it's a lovely ale with a sort of sweet coffee finish. We had a chilli beer last year which was Fire in the Hole, which was very hot. 
and it was brilliant. Everyone thought this was fantastic, and they all had half pints. They weren't, no one, you know, no one was drinking pints, but um, it went very quickly. But uh, we've been quite lucky. Um, get very few beers that we can't sell. Out of 220, that's quite good. What's your, your prediction for the, the beer that's going to sell out first? At the, the way it's going at the moment, it could well be the black pudding beer. Is that because of the name? It, yeah, I, I suspect. It, it's, it's a dark beer and we haven't got as many dark beers as we've got in light, but black pudding, the name will draw people in. Yes, I think I would, because the terms are big breakfast eaters. I think they would love to have, a, have it for breakfast even. We will not drink real ale that has uh, an offensive name given to it. No. Have you ever got any examples? Yes, dogs bullets <laughs> for one. <laughs> See, this cider is it's not a fizzy drink at all, it's um, fairly cloudy and not too much fizz in there. And it tastes like a, a nice summer afternoon. My name's Andrea, this is the first time at my beer festival. This is JD Dry and to be honest, it tastes like horse manure. It's not good. I'll sip it for you now, but it doesn't taste particularly nice. This beer I have in my hand now is brewed by the Dark Star Brewing Company, which is up in Anstey. It's their seasonal beer for March, which is called Spring Equinox. As you can see, it's a clear amber ale. It has a fantastic taste. Loaded with hops, citrus aftertaste, very, very drinkable, very light, very refreshing. Excellent beer. As we were talking about, there's, there are a group of people called scoopers, and if I understand it correctly, what they tend to do is they'll go around the festivals and they want to try the new beers. I mean, it's a big thing. Is this the first time a, a brewery has produced this particular beer? Is it a new brewery and this is the first beer that they've ever produced? So what they want to do is try those beers. They'll not only taste them here, but they'll take a sample of it away with them to keep. And you'll see guys with like toolboxes with little glass files in them. And they've taken a little bit of that beer away. And it's, it's like any hobby. You've always got people who are interested in it being the perfection side of it. You know, what hops have been used, what yeast has been used, what malt's been used. Where, what part of the country did it come from? You know, is it a new beer from a big brewery? Is it a new microbrewery? And they'll just travel all over the place to do it. They'll be the first people through the door on Thursday night because they want to make sure that there's no way that beer's run out so that they can try it. My name is Loz Aslett. I live locally in Southwick. I've been coming to beer festivals for many, many years. I'm one of a group of uh, drinkers called Scoopers. Right. We're also known as tickers, and uh, one of the things we like to do is sample as many beers as possible. Some of the guys are really, take this very, very seriously and, and travel long distances just to drink as many beers as possible. And there's an elite group um, that have drunk in excess of 10,000 different beers, and there are quite a few people that have been drunk over 20,000 different beers. That is what is commonly known as ticking, yes, yes, yeah. Um, like bird twitchers that go out looking for new birds, we go out looking for new beers. It's not a secret society in any way. It's just that some of the guys are a little bit shy and some of the guys do this in their spare time. And we have been ridiculed by people. They just say, oh, they're train spotters and this, that and the other, you know. Every, everyone's got their anoreks. You've, you've got the twitchers, you've got the railway anoreks, you've got, yeah. Look, one or two in action here. They spend uh, half an hour having that much of half a different different beers, and then they wander off somewhere else. We come we here to drink. We don't miss the bed with with tips and whatever. We've got nothing to do with cameras. We just, we just no. come and drink beers. If you give a scooper a beer list, and they don't know two thirds of the beers, they come. Oh my God! I can't go there. They would take. How weird is that? They will take their samples away, put it in the cupboard, and they'll take it off the box, whatever that means. But anyway, um, bit weird, but interesting people, I think. Very interesting. That's what I do for a living. Um, I also produce shirts for, uh, for the public or for businesses as well. Um, but otherwise, beer festivals, all my own designs, 
um, just sell direct to the public or online. Most popular one at the moment is definitely the Excesses. Spoof on the Exorcist, of course. Um, and then I would say the 